Welcome back to the Talking with Taylor podcast. I'm your host, Taylor, where we talk with anyone about anything, and hopefully everyone around the table will listen. And I'm so excited today to have a very special guest. You know, we've had a lot of guests on the show, but today's a very special one because uh, he was my high school strength coach, and his name is Coach Mitchell. Coach, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. How are you doing, Taylor? Coach, we are good. We're good. We're just getting ready for the, the Christmas season, as everyone is. And so, uh, man, we're glad you guys are doing well, but I'm so excited to talk to you today, and um, I think this topic is very important, but before we dive into what you're doing at Greater Level Training, um, we're going to talk about what, you know, you taught me in high school and kind of what led you to go into strength and conditioning, and, and so, you know, Coach, Coach Mitchell was my strength coach really from eighth grade till my senior year, and when I got into college, I realized really quickly how uh, fortunate I was to have Coach Mitchell as my strength coach. Coach uh, really and truly had me prepared in a way that other guys were not. They, they basically like, uh, you know, came in and didn't have any form, but Coach Mitchell had specific programs for us as high school students that we learned in college that most guys didn't have. So, so Coach, what, uh, what really led you into um, becoming a, a strength coach and and honestly, furthering and getting your PhD. And so what, what led you into that field before, um, before you started uh, learning about human development and the body? Well, first off, um, in my undergrad, and still in college, I acquired a, a biology degree. Um, and with that biology degree, there wasn't really any option to go into exercise science. They didn't have a program specific to that. But being a baseball um, athlete at Stillman, I wanted to understand more about how the body adapts to different strength training methods. Um, as you know, probably prior to when you were younger or other athletes as well too, when you're in a high school setting, you're usually just given some type of workout that a coach writes down or they may print off from another college program. And it's not really specific for the high school athlete. Um, so after finishing up my undergraduate degree, I had an opportunity to obtain my master's in exercise physiology at UAB. So that just really blew my mind and opened my mind up to so much being an intern um, with strength and conditioning um, at UAB. And that gave me the opportunity to work with all sports. And it gave me the understanding that with each sport needs to be a specific workout for that sport. And even with having that specific workout for that sport, each individual is gonna be different. So it still needs to be adaptation modification that's gonna be for that individual athlete to help them succeed. That's right. And, you know, you talk about uh, specificity, you talk about, um, you know, just the, um, you know, most high schools today, literally, like you said, they'll, they'll write down something on the whiteboard and, and they say, Hey, do this, but it's not specific. There's no, there's no form training. The amount of training that's uh, focused on form is very little, if, if none at all. And then, um, and then, you know, for me, my, I remember my freshman year, all the freshmen had to go through two or three weeks of form training where I'd already learned how to do form in high school. And so, um, and there's these, some of the guys, some of these guys that were going through form training are playing in the NFL right now, you know? And so uh, it just depends on, you know, what kind of high school or the high school strength conditioning program. And so I'm, I was thankful and, and grateful that we had you and uh, a lot of guys, man, you know, you've got Ben Jones and you've got several other athletes that are in the NFL that went through your program and your program has, has definitely paid off. And how many, and there's so many college athletes that, you know, Tevin Cruz, Daheem Watkins and, and Landon Cobb, I mean, all these guys I can think of right off the top of my head that, um, that really and truly benefited from a great, uh, a great strength and conditioning program in high school. And so, um, well, well, coach, a, a couple other things that, you know, we're thinking about um, with the, the field of exercise science, exercise physiology, that field has come a long way since even, even I was in college. That's, I, I, that was my major. But now you see um, high schools are now starting to hire specific, you know, strength coaches, but that field has come a long way in the past, I would say, 10 years. So how, how have you seen that field uh, develop? Uh, since since you were in school and, and where we are and where we are today, right. So even recently with um, colleges, um, now that they require um, all of the strength coaches to be certified with a CSCS. Yep. Um, before that, colleges uh, strength coaches didn't even have to be certified That's in right. some instances. So 
that's one thing that I um, pride myself on, like working with you all at BF County and currently now is I was certified. So I understood the background. I understood what needed to be done. And that same trend is now going to the high school level because one, it really helps the coaches. I know a lot of coaches think that they can understand what they're doing, or I can just print off this from what a D1 school is doing. And I know what a squad is. I know what a bench is, but there's so much to it that also if a coach is really relieved that burden on themselves, they can do more of the coaching that they need to do. And then the athletes are going to progress and everything else. But I understand too that with having that, not a lot of coaches are going to be certified. That's right. And also you have schools that are going to have limited resources that may can't afford someone like that. But that's what we kind of try to provide with greater level training is the opportunity for a coach just to sit back, allow myself, interns, other coaches to come in to turn that high school setting into more so like a, a collegiate setting where you're going to have those GAs, you're going to have those head strength coaches, and you can just sit back, learn from the program. We can guide you through the program, or you could just watch and just help motivate your athletes to succeed. So I think it's going in a direction now where everybody is understand the importance of someone being certified, someone being knowledgeable and helping their athlete ultimately get to their goal and the team to get to their goal. That's right. Absolutely. Having somebody in the room that is certified, I think is huge. And, and you definitely hit on that. And, and obviously also, you know, we're um, the coach, the co head coach can focus on coaching football and you bring a guy in that's focused on strength and conditioning, preparing the athlete to play football. And so that's a, uh, that's some great stuff. So yeah, you, you hit on it for just a, a brief moment, but now let's, let's dive into greater level training. You mentioned that you go in, you help, help coaches, help high school. So what, what led you to start this and what all do you guys do? Well, basically I started it right before I left Bill. So I spent six years at Bill County high school. Um, thereafter, um, just had an opportunity to obtain my PhD. I wanted to just learn more. And with the opportunity of obtaining my PhD at the University of Alabama, it just exposed me to more information about how the body reacts to exercise, how to work with people of different ability levels, mm -hmm. um, how to um, actually develop, implement, evaluate, uh, research, and look at that. So it gave me the opportunity to not only focus on athlete, but work, work on or focus on general population as well, too. So even like in with my dissertation, one thing I did is looking at intermittent versus interval walking. So you hear about high intensity exercise, but high intensity exercise is not safe for everyone. That's right. So what about people in a general population who have a low fitness level? And we found that with that, by just going uh, walking at like three miles per hour um, for a minute and then going higher to uh, 30 seconds or four miles per hour, just doing those intervals that people can receive more benefits than just doing continuous. Also, multiple bouts of exercises throughout the day is going to be more beneficial to someone just doing one workout and then just sitting down doing nothing the rest of the day. Um, so also after that, I was had the opportunity to obtain a postdoc fellowship. So I did additional research for communities. Mm -hmm. So I learned with, um, with Saving Lives. Uh, so I worked with the um, Center for Community-Based Partnerships at the University of Alabama. So I worked with Saving Lives, which was an initiative to help individuals to better themselves and get health information, but in a church setting. Mm -hmm. So meeting on Bible study days when the church, maybe the first hour, they gave us the opportunity to provide health information. Also we did health screenings. Also swim to the top, trying to help disadvantaged youth to learn how to swim and reduce mm -hmm. their risk of unintentional drownings. Yeah. Um, and then I had the opportunity to develop my own three month intervention in Marion, Alabama, mm -hmm. to partner with extension officers and create a three month nutrition and physical activity intervention where we met twice a week, had University of Alabama exercise science um, interns or students, they helped as well. But we were able to see a reduction in systolic blood pressure, waist to hip reduction, all of that in just the three months. So that just kind of helped me to formalize that, hey, I know the strength and I still can learn from that, but there's so much with helping people just reduce their risk and overall um, chronic diseases and then also now partnering with my wife she had the opportunity to do a postdoc in health education where now she can understand and help parents mm -hmm. that may have kids with deviant behavior or school system that have kids with deviant behavior work in small groups find out different ways that they can 
uh, come up with solutions, strategies to help them to try to alleviate their behavior and also parents, how to be better parents, parent education sessions. So how do you talk to your kids? Mm. How do you listen to your kids? How do you communicate and everyone can work on uh, at same kind of level where that you actually can be productive as a family and also teaching parents to have that self-care. It's okay to kind of say, I need time for myself. Um, y'all go play this game. Let me go take a bath for 30 minutes by myself without hearing mm-hmm. anything. Just trying to focus on focus on the mental, nutrition, physical, and just trying to help people of all ability levels. And um, it's just been great. I mean, just also the opportunity to work with people with disabilities. So we have a current contract with Horizon School in Birmingham with students with intellectual disability. And the amazing thing about it is you can do some of the same similar things that I did with athletes, agility ladders, yep. knee up, toe up, the same thing because we're just working on functional ability. I work with older adults um, up to 87 years old. Mm. Same thing, they receive the benefits. But the biggest thing that we try to promote is that small group atmosphere. Because as you know, with your groups, when you're working with your students and the mm. church and everything, if you have that group atmosphere, it's more likely that they're gonna be accountable. Yep. It's more likely that they're gonna sustain the activity. So we're just trying to create that family and also being able to work with Bibb County, strength and conditioning as a GLT yep. um, owner. And also I work with the students with intellectual disabilities or disabilities at Bibb County High School for a short time as well too. Well, coach, man, what you guys are doing is incredible and it's taken your passion with uh, not just uh, physical health, mental health, every aspect of that is, is incredible. And, and, and coach, what you're doing in the high schools and, and, with general population is just uh, is just fantastic. Well, coach, before we go, how how can people get in touch with you guys if they're interested in bringing you in? If you know if a high school is really looking for some mentorship, or if they're looking for you guys to you know come in and, and take a, what? How can they get in touch with you, and where can they find out uh, more information? Well, you, first you can go to our website, greaterleveltraining.com. Mm-hmm. Also, we're on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. Um, same thing, greater level of training. And also we're starting our YouTube channel as well too, um, greater level training. And in, um, in the first of the year, we still have a TikTok as well too. Um, so any of those, you can find the information. They can contact us at info at greater level training.com okay. um, to email us. Um, but one thing that we're trying to do now is allow people with the YouTube channel is we're having some videos. Some of the videos will be from some BIP athletes that I had um the opportunity to work with initially just to so form for athletes but with the youtube channel what we're really trying to focus on is allow people it's a free service but just going in and get coaching where it may be okay i want to focus on balance and coordination mm-hmm. well in that balance and coordination playlist we're going to have an opportunity for you to do this in a chair standing with the assistance of a chair or if you want like be like an athlete you won't have a chair at all but it's different things to still work on the same um, focus or area for those individuals. So we're trying to make it inclusive so everyone can benefit and also providing coaching within the description. Hey, try to do this many, this for this many times per week yep. and just provide feedback there. So I just want to just try to just have an inclusive wellness environment, which I know a lot of people with disabilities, I mean, or who have disabilities or who may be older, they feel neglected. They feel like they don't know exactly what to do. And also some athletes, because, I mean, you all used to get upset with me and everything about, like you said, with form, yeah. technique. But the main thing is, especially like with athletes, older those it's the same thing, like with flexibility. Yeah. People don't take the time to work on flexibility. I'll go in the gym, i hit this, this, but I don't want to stretch. Right. Or I don't want to do this. But hip flexibility, that's key to everyone. Yeah. I mean, look how many people, older adults, and people have like knee replacement, hip replacements. And it's just about your about your ability for your body to move in certain directions. That's right. Well, Coach, we're definitely going to have you on again for sure, especially when the YouTube channel launches. And so, um, but all all his information all is going to be in the description in this YouTube video. So be sure to check out their website. And if you have any uh, questions, reach out to them. And, and Coach, thank you for being on today. And guys, thank you so much for listening to the Talking with Taylor podcast. Uh-huh.